Hey, if you did the previous part of this tutorial correctly, you should have the following. You should have your stepper motor with that orientation, your two holes at the top. Obviously, it's, it's going to affix like that on that end of the Y. Okay. One thing I didn't mention to you, but should have been obvious, was um, to put half of your Lovejoy connector on there. Preferably, I would say, with the spider. And that will be ready to accept um, the threaded rod of the Y-axis. While we're at it, we might as well fit the motor mounting on the on the, on the Y axis, sorry, that was for, the first one was for the Z axis. Sorry, that that is the Z axis, not the Y axis. Um, we might as well fit the motor on the Y axis mounting also, so that'll be prepared and ready. I'm going to do that now. Again, I'm using a three mil Allen key to release the four. Um, Allen key cap screws. Also use the 3mm Allen key to release the grub screw on the Lovejoy um, connector which obviously mounts on the end of the NEMA 23 stepper motor there. So I'm now going to prepare that. Again we're preparing the motor so that the wires are fed the appropriate direction. With the y-axis, which goes on this end of the bed, you'll have the y letter on the top. Okay, more or orientating my wires to the back. Now we're going to refit the screws for that, the cap screws. And that'll be then ready for mounting shortly. Making note at this point, the four screws, you've got two short ones and two long ones. The two longer ones go into the top section, which has got your letter on it, in those two holes there. Obviously the two shorter ones are going through the stepper and through the thinner plate. That's the motor mounted now turned the mounting bracket the opposite way up, brought around the spindle so that we've got the flaps facing up, I've loosened off the grub screw so I'm keying that on. The correct way to fit these is to keep pushing it down on the shaft until the shaft is sitting in line just before the spider. The spider is the, the rubber centre part so, keep pushing that down the shaft. Okay, I've done that. Now I'm going to tighten up that Allen key. Okay, so far so good. So we've got both these mounts prepared now with the stepper motors and the Lovejoy connectors with the spiders inserted. Make sure that bearing's in there. You've also got the other bearing in there. Now obviously before we can mount either of those, we've now got to get working on removing of these beds. Okay, I'm just going to see what we need to do now for this part. The next operation, using a 3mm Allen key, is to remove the gib screws. Those are for the x-axis. So we need to unscrew these four gib screws. Okay, using the 3mm Allen key I've removed the gib screws. I think I'm going to remove this scale marker as well. 
So obviously if we remove this cross slide it's going to leave that sticking up. That could be dangerous. So I'm just going to remove that while we're doing the next part of the operation using a posi screwdriver. Putting all those parts safely to one side as we will require those again later. Now I'm going to look into the removal of this top bed. Having now turned round the table, I will be able to just slide this bed straight off. Because we've removed the gib screws, this is quite heavy, so be careful. Carefully put that to one side. Okay. Looking good. Just going to pause again while I look to investigate to see what we need to do next. Okay, having investigated slightly, this brass nut is secured by two 3mm Allen keys, sorry, Allen screws, located just down there. I'm now going to release, re release those. That should then allow all this assembly to be lifted free. Yes, as expected, releasing the two 3mm three, three Allen screws has indeed released the brass holding screw, uh, holding nut. I then remove that and put all that to one side. Also, might be an idea to put the gib to one side. That's what those for screws at the front, the gib screws, were securing. Right, okay, we're now going to investigate to see what we need to do for the remaining axis, the remaining Y axis. Let's have a look. Maybe we might need to lie the milling machine down to do this. I'm now going to investigate and look into this. At this point, I think it would be a good idea to remove the cable ties from off the threaded rods or lead screws. That was accomplished quite easily just using a pair of pliers. One thing to mention at this point is make sure that you do not allow your nuke... Um, do, 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 uh, what the heck are those called? Um, oh, the part that rides on the lead screw anyway at, at no point allow that to come off the threaded bar because if you do so all the bearings are going to drop out of there which have already been pre-sized and everything by Michael if for any reason you did need to remove it you would use this piece of tube so that this piece of tube would slide down the inside of it to prevent the bearings from falling out. Whether we're going to need to use that in any way, I don't know yet, but um, I'm sure we're going to find out on the next part of this project. I'm wondering if there's any need for this handle on the side here now. I think I'm going to remove that, to be honest with you. Um, that's useful for manual operation, but uh, once this is set up for the CNC operation, you can't see there being any need or use for that handle, that lock-off point. Okay, this is how we're, we're currently looking with the machine. Right, now...